What is neurofeedback? Well, I'm glad you asked because I want the whole world to know about it. I'm Dr. Trish Lee, let me tell you. Okay, on my YouTube channel at Dr. Trish Lee, I have entire playlists dedicated to explaining this concept to you. I explain to you our entire home neurofeedback program and how it works, all the data, the graphs, the charts that you will see, how brain mapping works so that you know how your brain is performing. So if you wanna know extensively how neurofeedback works, please go check one of those playlists out. And if you have any questions, email me at trish at drtrishlee.com. But in the short run, let me walk through the basics with you and give you the lowdown on what neurofeedback is, how it works, who it is most beneficial for, and how we know what your brain is doing in the first place so we know if it's a good option for you or not. Okay, so what is neurofeedback? Neurofeedback basically uses advanced technology and these days, this is awesome. Let me show you this. I happen to have mine right here. These days we can do neurofeedback using this headband. And it used to be big clunky computers with caps filled with gel. Now we have a slimline headband with sensors on the inside, sensors in the ear pieces, and an external sensor portal so that we can map your brain at home and then we can do your sessions at home. And if that isn't awesome during coronavirus and COVID-19 and quarantine time, I don't know what is. But the way that it works is these sensors read how your brain is performing. They don't put anything into your brain. Now I need to repeat, th repeat that probably a few times. Neurofeedback is not neurostimulation. It doesn't put anything into your brain. It's considered neuromodulation, which means that it helps your brain change its own performance pattern from the inside out without putting one thing in. And right now our filter at Lee Brain and Spine is that we don't do things that put anything into people. All the modalities that we use are scientifically proven to help your system heal from within when pushed in the right direction. And that's what neurofeedback does. These sensors read how your brain is performing and then give your brain feedback on how it is working. So the way that it works is most people watch YouTube videos. So you should be right in the, in the right place, right? So when you're watching a YouTube video and it's any video that you find enjoyable and relaxing, yes, you can watch mine, but it's not necessary. You watch any video that you like. And honestly, I like to watch TED Talks and things that are motivational. Dr. Wayne Dyer, one of my greatest mentors ever. I watch those videos because I just settle in and I lose time because I'm enjoying them. And the more I'm enjoying the video, the more my brain relaxes. And what that means is the neurofeedback can go to work, providing feedback in the sense of visual feedback that is the screen brightening when my brain is in the zone, making calm focus speed. The spe screen brightens when I'm in the zone and it dims when my brain goes out of the zone of calm focus and goes out here to the extremes and starts using stressy anxiety mode or overwhelmed, fall asleep, distracted, can't focus mode, burnout mode. And if it's using these modes and not perfect processing speed in the middle, the screen goes dim. There's also auditory feedback to your ears. What happens there is your audio goes low when you're out of the zone. And when your brain is making the perfect speed in the middle for calm focus, your audio plays louder so you can hear it. And that is built-in feedback for your brain because your brain wants to see it and wants to hear it so that it will continually threshold and keep moving your brain in the right direction so it gets stronger. It's literally like a workout for the brain. It's working the muscle of the brain so that it gets stronger using the optimal performance pattern and getting out of stressy anxiety mode and getting out of overwhelmed, fatigue, distracted mode. Okay, so that's the gist of it. So how do we know how your brain is performing in the first place? The first step is to have a brain map, and I like to call it a baseline brain performance pattern, a BBPP. So if we take your brain map, what that shows us is 
how your brain is using speed. Is it using enough calm focus mode or is it using too much anxiety mode, high beta, fast energy? And that's making it so that you feel anxious and then it perpetuates itself so you become more anxious. That's a negative feedback loop. What we're doing is we're gonna break that by shifting your brain into a better pattern and we're gonna make it so that your brain works better and then we create a positive feedback loop for permanent lasting change. So we don't want your brain out here in ADHD, unfocused, distracted mode. We're gonna train that down using the dimming and the brightening and the dimming. We're gonna use that as that positive feedback reward for your brain so it starts to hardwire in the perfect processing speed for calm focus and let the weeds grow over the other pattern. So first we need to know what your brain is doing through your brain map. It's gonna show us what mode your brain is in and what it's using, how far away it is from the optimal mode, then we know where the work is to be done and how much there is. And that is what dictates how long it will take a person to use neurofeedback. Okay, so what kind of brain performance does neurofeedback use? It's called EEG, it's electroencephalogram, and these are EEG sensors. So the EEG is reading the electrical energy in your brain, which is measured in hertz, and that's cycles per second. So it's literally how fast the electrical energy is cycling in your brain. If it's cycling perfectly fast, you're in the zone, you're calm and focused. If it's cycling super fast, you're anxious. If it's cycling too slow, you can't produce and you can't focus. That is the energy that it measures. It's called EEG. And then we know which mode you're in and we know what we need to do to get you back to calm focus. Okay, so EEG actually provides more information than fMRI or SPECT exam because those exams show activity of brain performance, what areas of the brain are active. EEG goes a step further and it shows you those speeds, those frequencies from extra slow to extra fast. So there's two measures that you'll see primarily in neurofeedback. It's amount or magnitude of each of the speeds and then it is each individual frequency and how the brain is using speed. Additionally, we can see connectivity. We can see how all those brain areas are communicating with each other because we know the brain works in a network, actually multiple networks, and that they have to be communicating with each other perfectly for behaviors to be able to be pulled off perfectly. So we need that communication to work well. What causes a brain to not work optimally? There's four main types of reasons why your brain wouldn't be working optimally. Number one is you have a neurodevelopmental disorder like ADHD, learning challenges, sensory processing disorder, speech and language difficulties, any physical difficulty that is developmental in nature. Number two, there's acute injuries that can create dysregulation in the brain. That's what it's called, neurological dysregulation. An acute reason would be a head injury or a mild traumatic brain injury, a stroke, PTSD, those are acute. Then there's also chronic. The third reason would be chronic issues. So people who have chronic pain, anxiety, depression, chronic fatigue, those are brain patterns that were created over time and worsened over time and have hardwired themselves in as the person's operating mode and they need to be backed out. Number four is developmental neuro, sorry, not developmental, neurodegenerative diseases. So neurodegenerative diseases are ALS, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, um, motor disorders, memory slipping, all of that is neurodegeneration with age. And for many people, that neurodegeneration can happen too early and too fast. And that's what creates their symptoms. But there's studies that show that neurofeedback not only can bring the electrical energy back online, it can also help to fatten up and make those brain cells healthy again. So those are the four main classes that neurofeedback is perfectly positioned to help. And I'm, I'm, Keeping track on notes from my blog post at Dr. Trish Lee, 
of the same title. So you can go read all of that at my blog post with the links to the scientific studies that prove what I'm telling you is true. Okay, so how do I know if I can benefit from neurofeedback? You know because you have one of those four classes of neurological dysregulation. You have a neurodevelopmental disorder, you had something acute happen, you're stuck in chronic anxiety or depression, or you are at the beginning stages of a neurodegenerative disease. That's how you know neurofeedback's right for you because you fall perfectly into the classes that neurofeedback helps. How does neurofeedback work? I've already shown you our snappy headband that we use and in the office we still use full big neurofeedback systems that can do a full brain map and can give you the highest research based proven highest power session that is technician guided. Now the difference is you come in and we have our technicians there, our doctors are in the office, we help you do everything. When you use the home system, yep, you've got to do some of it yourself at home, but it's easy peasy and you can set it up in your neurofeedback uh, area and you can get daily sessions. What it does is it reads the ebb and flow of the brain activity like I described, and then it teaches your brain to make more of perfect processing speed and less of the too fast or the too slow. Now, what I want you to know is it doesn't put anything into your brain and it cannot read your thoughts. People think that a lot too. It doesn't read your thoughts, it just reads the electrical energy. Can neurofeedback heal your problem? Yes, I think yes it can. And I know some people don't like me using the term heal, but healing happens on a continuum from 1% to 100%. And I thankfully I haven't seen many people at 1%. I've seen lots of people get 50% better, 70% better, 100% better, all within the time frames of six months to one year. And I will tell you, there's people who choose to go longer than their six month or one year program because they've gotten far, but they haven't gotten all the way in that time frame. So I've seen people make big, big improvements. And then most importantly, that translates into big improvements in quality of life. So you don't have to have your brain pattern be 100% better to have a much better quality of life. And that's actually proven by science too. So there's people who get all levels of healing, but the beauty of our neurofeedback systems is that it measures your brain performance pattern during every single session. So I told you how we have your baseline brain performance pattern at the outset. Now we can see every single session and we can see how your brain is changing within and across sessions and I show them to you. You always see how your brain is performing. You can see if it's getting better or not. And if it's a slow trainer, if it's someone, sometimes there's people whose brains are just a little bit slower to come online. If you're one of those, we're talking, me and you are talking about that and we are problem solving it. And there's ways that we can problem solve it so you get the benefits from neurofeedback and comprehensive care. Do the neurofeedback training effects last? They do, for most people, they last permanently. And if we do it right, that is the goal. And I make sure we do it right as long as there's no variables I don't know about. And many times there becomes variables I don't know about. But what I'm talking about is when you struggle with anxiety or ADHD or depression, you're stuck in a negative feedback loop. And what that means is your brain is performing in a mode that is getting you negative behaviors, which gets you negative outcomes. It's the proverbial downward spiral. What neurofeedback does is it shifts your brain pattern into a new mode. You get better behaviors that get you better outcomes and then you lock in the new better brain performance pattern because it's being rewarded by its own feedback in the world. How cool is that, right? It's called operant conditioning and it's been proven for over a hundred years, I think. So um, BF Skinner is one of the first per people who really proved it, but it's been used for a long time based upon Pavlov's dog, which was brain conditioning, which is over 115 years old, the experiment now. So those training effects last as long as we establish the positive feedback loop. I work hard to make sure that that happens if we're working together and hopefully if you're working with someone else, that's what you want your practitioner to do, looking at the data and how that's showing up in behaviors for you. Okay, so if you wanna get started with neurofeedback, 
email me at trish at drtrishlee.com. It doesn't even have to be neurofeedback with me. Like I told you, I am here because I wanna get the word out that if you suffer from any of the things I just talked about, you're probably a perfect candidate for neurofeedback. And if you wanna do it with somebody in your community, I am all for that. I will help set you up. I'll serve you in any way that I can because it's important for me that you know that this exists and it's right for you. Okay, so email me and I'm happy to help out. And remember, control your brain or it'll control you.